Hello everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy from the Nautilus Dry Docks and uh, wanted to give you an overview uh, of a really cool boat. Uh, it's a 48th scale German Type 9D U-boat. Uh, now this particular boat was scratch built, uh, completely scratch built by a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Hill uh, up in Canada and he is a very accomplished builder and he builds some amazing boats. Uh, be sure to check out his channel. I'll try and make sure and put the link in the description. Uh, Windsor Sub is his uh, handle on YouTube. Make sure you check it out. All of his boats run exceptionally well as you will see and this one uh, is certainly no exception. So as a little bit of background on this particular boat, it ended up to me uh, a pretty smashed up. Now if you ever ship your submarines, never ship the cylinder and batteries inside because the shipping companies will, every single time, throw that box around, throw it off the truck, uh, and if there's anything that's heavy inside, it will break loose. And once it does, it'll move back and forth, smashing everything inside. So unfortunately, there were a lot of bulkheads uh, broken, the linkages uh, were broken, so there was some work to do to get it going uh, again, but I did manage to get it all set up and uh, managed to put a new paint job on it as well. So what we're going to do, I'm going to give you an overview uh, of the boat, how it's set up, how it goes together, and then at the end I uh, will show you some video of the boat on the water. So I want to start this uh, demonstration here with an overview of the cylinder. Now the cylinder was also scratch built. So all of the end caps were turned from uh, acrylic sheeting. We've got acrylic tubing uh, in there. What we've got, uh, we've got a 15 amp electronic speed controller and our main direct drive motor. Uh, a couple of servos, one for the rudder and one for the rear uh, dive planes. We have a six channel radio system and I'm utilizing uh, the VEX six channel radios that I offer on NautilusDrydox.com. Uh, we got a ballast servo in here and an air pump, uh, a 12 volt air pump as well. So the premise behind this is it's a, uh, a gas uh, pump system hybrid and the really cool thing about this is uh, in order to dive it opens up this valve which is slightly undersized. This is a standard Schrader valve, a tire valve. Um, it takes about a minute to vent this whole tank. Um, this could probably be upgraded uh, for a larger orifice but it certainly works well as it stands right now. But to surface what ends up happening the um, ballast servo um, activates the uh, micro switch <clears throat> as that pushes forward uh, it gives a burst of gas into the ballast tank makes the model positively buoyant uh, brings it up to surface and then when the servo uh, retracts back to neutral again the pump gets kicked on and it stays on it gets latched and so the uh, pump continues to blow out the ballast tank until it's empty and you're not using um, excess gas to do so. In order to turn that pump off you just give a little blip of the servo uh, into the vent position and it shuts the uh, pump off. It's very very slick system. Uh, and then at the other end here we've got our uh, bow plane servo. Um, all of them have magnetic linkages um, which Duane fabricated and of course I offer these on Nautilus Dry Docks uh, as well, my version of these. So that's an overview of the cylinder. Let's go about throwing it in the boat. I'll show you how that works and uh, give you an overview of how the boat looks when it's all put together. Okay, the hull. Uh, as I mentioned, the hull was completely scratch built and Duane typically utilizes the lost foam method uh, to do that. I've got a blog article on my website if you wanted to take a look and see how that works. Um, got some forward dive paint plane um, linkages in here. This is all our flotation foam. I fabricated new bulkheads to mount the watertight cylinder and to keep the main battery in place. 
Got some uh, ballast in the bottom, some loops of Velcro to hold the cylinder in place, the rear bulkhead for holding the cylinder in place, and this is the, uh, the gearbox for the drive props. Um, actually works really good, but it is pretty noisy, um, which is not a, a big deal at all. Uh, but it works really, really well. Actually, surprisingly well. This boat turns, or sorry, moves really quickly. Um, the rear section here has a very unique setup for the rudder. If you take a look at that, it's on a, uh, a series of gears. And that big central gear moves the rudders back and forth just like this. And it gives uh, you know really good throw both ways for the uh, the rudder. So that's a really unique setup there as well. I'm going to slip this rear section back in place. Basically, you just drop it and then push it to the back, and that locks it in place. Let's put our battery in. This is the main drive battery, a 3.0 amp hour, 12 volt system. Um, just basically. Um, arrow goes forwards, drops in place. To put the cylinder in, we're going to spread these Velcro straps apart, slip the cylinder in, and then what we need to do is uh, grab out this nylon dog bone which fell in the bottom there. So this is the little intermediate uh, dog bone and that goes in the adapter for the drivetrain, line it up with the output on the cylinder and drop it right in place. So now that that is done, we can just grab our magnetic linkages. They snap right into place, which is beautiful. And up at the uh, front here, the front linkage snaps into place. And then we're going to tighten down our Velcro straps. That one got pinned underneath. I'm going to have to grab that in a second. The um, power leads get run down the side of the hull up to the front. This is a, a tube for checking the integrity of the seals of the watertight cylinder. Um, you just pull out this cap. You can blow into it when this is under the water and check for leaks. But this just gets tucked into the hull uh, on the side there where it is out of the way. To get the deck on, basically slip it in place, pat it down. Center section, you need to connect the uh, hose for the ballast system because it draws air through the actual snorkel of the boat from the surface. There we go. Press it to the back, locks in place, and the last one in the very front, press it forward. Drop it in place, and then there's a little switch, you just push towards the back there. Give you um, this is, it's a really slick system actually in the front, so just a little lever that goes forward and back. If we push it forward, this section lifts up gives you access to the battery, you can connect and disconnect it to turn the model on and off. Very slick. So what we need to do now is connect the rigging. We've got two rigging lines that come from the back of the conning tower and these are threaded. Um, so you just basically thread them into place and that locks down just like that. So we've got these two aft connections to make up and one in the front. 
All right, let's take a look at the boat now that it is all assembled. Take a look at some of the details here. Uh, just beautiful work on the, the details on that forward torpedo tube area. Um, each piece of decking was individually laid from strips of styrene. Uh, we got all of the cleats, all of the mine uh, loading hatches, and uh, again, the conning tower. Again, bear in mind, all of this was scratch built by uh, Dwayne. Just, just beautiful work that he did. Um, the periscopes are removable, as is the antenna arrays. A beautiful little scale flag there. So again, I did a, a, a weathering job. When I got it, it was kind of like fresh out of the dry dock kind of look to it. It was just two tones of gray. So I weathered it up uh, a little bit using a wash and some oils to give it just a, a little bit of character, a little bit of rust. So if we wanted to turn the, uh, the model on, turn our transmitter on first, always transmitter on first. We're going to open up that front section, get our battery leads, and connect it together. Now it has a cooling fan inside the cylinder, and you can actually hear it humming uh, if you listen really closely, so you'll know that it is on and working. There we go. So let's check uh, some of the functions. Uh, check our forward dive planes. And we'll check uh, rudder operation and dive planes. And let's check out the throttle. Everything's working perfectly. Now we'll get the, uh, the pump going. Now you should hear um, a little bit of a blast of gas, uh, if there's any left in here. So I'll give it a burst. And you can hear the pump running. So that will continue to blow out the tank, and then to stop it, just tap the ballast servo into the vent position quickly, and it turns it off. Really slick. Again, really well engineered boat. And uh, as you're gonna see in a little bit here when I get it on the water, uh, just a great performer as well. So as you'll see here, I've had the boat out on the water and I need to apologize because the camera died uh, about five minutes into our shakedown cruise, unfortunately, um, as did my cell phone battery. So unfortunately, I did not get uh, much, if any, video of the boat uh, diving, but I did get some having it tool around on the surface there so you can see that, uh, as well as some really cool shots of it emerging from the submarine pen uh, in our local pond. Um, my impression, it's got a great turning radius. I think it's about 10, uh, a 12 foot diameter circle that it would scribe. Um, it's a nice touch being able to see those rudders directly behind the props, which gives it a really good uh, turning ability. Uh, it is also very reactive to both forward and rear dive planes. Um, again, the only thing that I would probably change with this boat would be to upgrade the vent. Um, nothing wrong with it as it stands right now, but uh, being able to cut that dive cycle down a little bit would be a great thing. Uh, I am super impressed with what Dwayne managed here. Uh, I've seen some of his other boats in person. They are equally well engineered, uh, if not better. So. Thank you for joining me. Uh, enjoy the video of the boat on the water. Be sure to check out my website, nautilusdrydocks.com, for this many other projects, uh, information, resources, and products that you can buy in this very cool RC submarine hobby. So again, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.